In this video, we'll be doing three typical trig substitution examples that you must know for your Calculus 2 class. For the first one, we have the integral of the square root of x squared plus 1. Well, the idea behind trig substitution is that if we have these two terms, if we can get that into just one term, and if that's still a perfect square, then we can cancel out the square root with that perfect square. And that would be really nice. It's kind of like completing a square in that sense, right? So now, we just have to look at the identities that we have and see which one has the sum of two squares that can be combined into just one term and still a perfect square. And the answer, I will just write this down right here for you guys. This is the one that we know. When we have tangent squared theta plus one, this right here gives us secant squared theta. You see, the sum of two terms, and we end up with just one. And this is a perfect square. Very nice. And the idea is that, you just think about it. Wouldn't it be nice if x is equal to tangent theta? If that's the case, then we can use this identity. So that's the idea of the trick substitution. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let x equal tangent theta. And we still have to remember the Google business, namely, get a dx, right? So go ahead and just differentiate. So dx is equal to the derivative of that, which is secant squared theta d theta. All right, now let's take this integral to the u, to the theta world. The u world is like the Disney world, and then the theta world is like the Griswold's world in Las Vegas. But anyway though, either world that you go to, just don't stay in the x world. Here is the integral, square root, x is tangent theta now, but don't forget we have to square that, let's put it here, and then we are going to add one to it. And then the dx is all that, so we multiply by secant squared theta d theta. Okay, now for this, we can simplify it. How? Well, we talked about it over there already, so that's why, right? This right here, we get secant squared theta inside of the square root. And right here, you can just cancel the square and the square root. Technically, you put an absolute value, right? Usually, when you do the square root of x squared, you have the absolute value of x, like that. But when you're doing the integral like this, I will tell you, just don't worry about it. There is some technical reason for it, depending on the theta values. But I will tell you, just worry about the absolute value whenever you have definite integrals, right? So that's the usual deal. So the easy answer for me to tell you is, just don't worry about the absolute value. Anyway, we end up with just secant theta. And this right here is being multiplied with that. So we are looking at the integral of secant theta times secant squared theta. And then of course, don't forget the d theta. And congrats, this right here, it's actually a very hard integral because that's the integral of secant to the third power theta. How do we do this? We actually have to use integration by parts breaking this down into this and that, differentiate secant theta and integrate secant squared theta, and that's actually a repeating case. For more information, you guys can watch my other video for it, because I would just like to use the result that we got previously to do this. This right here, we will get one half secant theta times tangent theta plus one half ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta. I know it's a long one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what? We're not done yet because we are still in the theta world, just like the resource world. We have to go back to our reality, namely the x world. So to do so, we look at our substitution, which is tangent theta. That's equal to x, which is the same as saying x over 1. And right here, we can go ahead and draw our triangle. Put the triangle right here and then the angle theta here for consistency purpose. Tangent is defined to be opposite over adjacent. So the opposite is right here, adjacent is right here. And to figure out the hypotenuse, we just go ahead and open the square root first and then do this side square, which is x square, and then we add this side square, so we have one square. And with this triangle, we get to figure out the secant theta, tangent theta, and just in case, if we have sine, cosine, cotangent, we can also use this triangle to figure out the expression for it. All right, let's see. One half is just one half. Secant is hypotenuse over 
adjacent. So it's this over that. So this is square root of x squared plus 1 squared, which is just 1. And then tangent theta is just x over 1, which is just x. So multiply by x on the outside. And then we continue. This is plus 1 half ln absolute value square root x squared plus 1. And then plus tangent x is just x. And notice inside here, this is always positive because this thing is bigger than that, right? Because you have the plus 1 to this. And uh, yeah, it's always positive, so you don't necessarily need the absolute value. You can just put down a parenthesis. And usually we like to put the x in front, so I will do that. So finally, 1 half x square root x square plus 1 plus 1 half ln parenthesis square root x square plus 1 and then plus x on the outside like so. And then we are all done, so I will just put down a plus c at the very end. Here is the answer. Right? You know what we are going to do next? We'll take this, change that to a minus. Yeah, and that will be question number two. So, what if we have a subtraction instead right here, huh? Well, again, we'll just consider which identity that we know. And in fact, it's the same one that we used earlier, but we just have to rearrange it. And that's going to be secant squared theta minus 1. This right here gives us tangent squared theta. So with that being said, x, just go ahead and make it equal to secant theta. And then we can just do the usual business. So go ahead and differentiate. We get secant theta times tangent theta d theta. And then we just pretty much do the same thing that what we did earlier. So here we have the integral square root secant square theta minus 1, and then the dx is all that, so we have the secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. Now, to simplify this, well, the inside is going to give us tangent square, so let's of course put that down real quick. And then we we'll do the square root, and this and that will cancel, so we just have tangent theta. Alright, this time, let's go again, go ahead and multiply everything, right? Multiply everything. So we are looking at the integral secant theta times this and that, right? This and that together, we have tangent, and this is a multiplication, so times tangent square theta. All right, so that's what we are dealing with. And uh, if you take a look right here, like how in the world can we integrate that? The way to integrate this is that we are going to use the identity that we used earlier, it's pretty much this right here. Yeah, we have to replace it. So if you look at tangent square theta, this right here is the same as secant square theta minus 1. And we will just distribute it. Distribute. So in fact, we're looking at the integral secant secant square. So all together is secant, yes, third power theta. Yeah, and then another one right here, minus secant theta. Oh my god. Yes, I know, that's just how it is. Okay. Don't get me wrong. This is long, I know that, but we have done it before. It's just the answer is just so long, that's why it seems like the question is so hard, but it's actually not so bad. Because the idea is that just go ahead and do this and go ahead and do that. The answer for that is pretty much what I told you earlier. One half, oh man, secant theta times tangent theta, and then plus one half ln absolute value, secant theta plus tangent theta and this right here is for this one and now we will have to minus the integral of secant theta and the answer for that is we are just going to minus and put it down right here you will see why the answer for that is ln absolute value secant theta plus tangent theta right so the red part is right here and if you look at this is one half and this is minus one so we can combine these two things together and uh i'm gonna do that later because you know we have to go back to the x world so let's see perhaps i will draw our triangle here we know secant theta is equal to x over one and this time the triangle is going to be drawn this way right here theta here 
but x is the hypotenuse, so we put it right here, and the 1 is the adjacent, we put it right here. And for this side, we just open the square root, we do the hypotenuse square, and then minus the other side square, like so. Alright, so let's go ahead and go back to the x world and then also combine this later on. So here we have the 1 half. Secant is x, very nice, so let's put that down. And tangent is this over that. So we are looking at square root of x squared minus 1. And now, again, they are the same term, right? Right, they are the like terms, so just go ahead and combine them. So we have minus 1 half, because 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And then we have the ln, absolute value. Secant theta is, again, x. And then tangent theta is square root of x squared minus 1. And here, we are using the absolute value because this is smaller than x. So if x is negative, maybe the inside will be negative, right? So uh, we use the absolute value for that, all right? Yeah, so let's just keep it like that. In the end, put down the plus C. That's it. That will do it. Yeah, that will do it. Well, what's the third one? Yes, I'm going to change this. Let's see. Square root of 1 minus x squared. This is very different than the other two that we did, but of course it's similar. So think about which identity can we use now. And of course, let me write it down right here for you guys. This is the one that we shall be looking at. And that's 1 minus sine squared theta. This gives us cosine squared theta. Right? So this right here will suggest us that let x equal sine theta. And then again, just do the usual business. We get dx that's equal to cosine theta d theta. And take this integral to the theta world. Here's the integral and we have the square root. 1 minus sine theta, and then of course we can put a square right here. And the dx is that, so we put on cosine theta and d theta. Okay, here we have 1 minus that, which is going to be cosine square theta inside of the square root. And again, this and that cancel. Don't worry about the absolute value. So here we have the cosine theta, like so. Alright, so as you can see, here, we are looking at the integral. We have cosine theta times cosine theta. So that's going to give us cosine squared theta. Right? So cosine theta times cosine theta, that's what we are dealing with. Okay, so how can we integrate cosine squared theta? Again, we'll be using identity for it. And this is the identity. We want to have the power to go to just the first power. And let me write that down for you. Cosine squared theta is equal to 1 half times 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. So again, this is just like a power reduction formula for the cosine. And then of course, we still have to integrate that and put on the d theta here. Okay, so we have the 1 half in the front already. Let's go ahead and just write that down and open the parentheses for the result of integration. Integrating 1 in the theta world, we get theta. And integrating cosine, we get positive sine. So that's what we have. And the input stays the same. But remember, when we go this way, the antiderivative way, we will have to divide it by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of the inside is just a 2. So we can do this, right? So just go ahead and divide it by 2, like that. All right. So that will be the integration. But now, how do we go back to the x world? You see, we have x is equal to sine theta, but this is sine 2 theta. So the angle is different, but it's okay, because we do have the double angle identity for sine. Ladies and gentlemen, sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta times cosine theta. And you see, this 2 and this 1 half will cancel out, right? Yeah, we use a lot of identities, like the first one right here, and also the second one right here, and also the third one right here. So, what can we do, right? Our, how, how, how is our life going to be if we don't have trick identities? 
By the way, perhaps I'm just going to distribute this right here for you guys. We are looking at one half theta. One half, right? One half times this. This cancel out, but we still have the one half. So we just add one half, and we have sine theta, cosine theta, like this. And look at that right here. Here we have the sine theta, which is just x over one. Draw the right triangle. Well. This time, x is the opposite. 1 is the hypotenuse because that's a definition for sine. Opposite over hypotenuse. And for the adjacent, just go ahead and open the square root and do the hypotenuse square minus the other side square. So that's what we have. And thanks to this, we can see the following. 1 half is still 1 half. That's good. Oh, this is just a theta. So what do we do? Well, look at this again. When we have sine theta is equal to x, this right here means theta is just equal to the inverse sine of x. Right? You can just do the inverse function on both sides. So that would be going for the theta right here. So 1 half theta, we get 1 half inverse sine x. Right? That's for that. And then for this and that, we can use the triangle to do the ratio of the sides. We get 1 half right here. Sine theta is just x over 1, which is x. And then cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just that. So we have the square root 1 minus x squared. So if you take a look at the other answers that we got earlier, they all look kind of similar, right? They have the x times the square root part and then something else after that. Yeah, just like all that. <laughs> Okay, anyway though, this right here is it for number 3, after we put on the plus C and box the answer. And I'll tell you, if you are taking Cal 2, yeah, you definitely need to know these 3 integrals. Sometimes you may have a uh, 4 right here, in that case make sure you check out my other video, because whenever you have a number like this, do not just do x is equal to 1 times sine theta, you actually have to do a times sine theta, but I do have other videos for that already, so you guys can check that out. These are the three typical or the classic calculus two examples for trick substitutions. Hope you liked it. Hopefully you find it useful and helpful. As always, that's it.